everyone, and welcome back to Shadow Archive. I'm Wolfie, and I'm here with Zenrod. Hello. And it's episode 100 of Shonen Archive. Woo! Celebrate, Zen. We made it to 100 Hell episodes. Hell yeah, we did it, baby. Oh, they said it wouldn't be possible. They said that we would take two months to make it. And by we, they said, I mean we. I thought it would take us another month or so to finally get to do the 100 episode. But we made it. Uh, feels great. We'll talk more about that later on because we're going to actually talk about what are we going to be doing for the 100th episode for just like we've done for the almost 100 episodes for about 75% of it. It's another, it's Gintama related once again. <laughs> we'll be talking about the movie, uh, which is, uh, has the world's longest name in the world. It is Gintama, the movie, the final chapter, Be Forever, Yoriozoya, which is the second movie. Of Gintama's movies, which there are a third, this was as the backstory I'll give, as I've said it in multiple episodes, but just in case someone decided to start up on episode 100, one of the random new followers I got from Fugo decided to start Shonen Archive in episode 100 to talk about this movie. Um, this Bless. Is blessed. As always, you're welcome here, but please stay. Um, the second movie was originally designed in a way that potentially... If for whatever reason they weren't going to be able to finish specifically the anime of Gintama, then this would be considered the send-off for the anime in general, um, which was something that happened a whole bunch back in the day. It probably doesn't happen as much nowadays, because I feel like most shonens I get approved for their anime usually see it to yeah the end. If, if you have an anime these days you're probably fine. Except I'm trying to think the last major Pro cancellation Promise that, like... Neverland did it finish? Well, I don't. Th well, Promise Neverland diverged from the manga so hard after the very first season that mm -hmm. I don't even know how to tell if it, it air quotes finished or not because it wasn't even trying to do the same thing. Fair. I guess we'll um, deal with that when we get to there. Toriko, I guess. Toriko was the big one from this area, of which, yeah. funny enough, there is a Toriko cameo in this movie. But Toriko is definitely the biggest one I can think of. That was the last time that they really greenlit an anime and got an anime and did not see it to the end. Uh, most of the time, if you get an anime in the new day, you will finish to the end for the most part. Yeah, well, because anime these days is all um, like seasonal productions. Like they they make a set number of episodes and a set number of cores or whatever. Yeah. The, um, the only one back running... then, this was just like Saturday morning cartoons, maybe <laughs> every yeah. day. And and the only one that's still kind of run on that old model is basically One Piece. One Piece is the last of the, like, we're just making a fuck ton of episodes and releasing them. <laughs> like, at any given point, I assume One Piece is still going on somehow, <laughs> that I'm not 100% sure. Um, oh, it's still going. Oh, yeah, it is. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, this one was supposed to be basically, we weren't sure if they were going to finish the anime, because uh, of a lot of weirdness going on with how he was trying to finish the story. Or if he was even going to be able to finish it in time. Basically, the anime had caught up to the manga, so he had to finish it. But there was still time, so he wasn't sure. Either way, all these kind of ended up being with him making the second movie with the idea of, I'm going to continue the manga, but for the animated people, for Sunrise, this is basically considered the end. Not to say that we won't come back. Bleach was the big example. That was the other one I was trying to think of. <laughs> Bleach. Bleach didn't finish its story. Oh, right? yeah. Bleach didn't. Yeah, Bleach technically didn't finish. Because again, that was another one that had so much filler in it that it that it ended up not finishing. They ended up bringing it back. That's why it's airing now. Exactly. Um, so yeah, this was originally supposed to be seen as that one, and so that's the context for this one. So we will, well, Zen will. Zen will tell us the give the plot summary if he can, and there we go. And then we will go from there. So Zen, tell us what happens in. Gintama, the movie, the final chapter, Be Forever, Yorozoya. Oh, the other thing I have to bring up, this movie's not on Crunchyroll. So we had it to watch, not. we had to watch, unfortunately, an inferior version of it. Well, Zen had to watch it on Facebook. <laughs> I had yeah, I had to watch someone upload it on Facebook. Yes, which thank you very much, but unfortunately Facebook has a copyright system, so yeah. <laughs> the music. But, we, has... but weirdly, it only copyrighted the music. Not the fucking show. Not the show itself. Crazy. I don't know what's going on in Facebook. It was very with... weird. It was very weird. So I'm just going to say that upright front of it. I was able to eventually find a better version on Daily Motion. This wasn't this wouldn't be a big problem, but unfortunately, they someone basically talked 
And so a lot of the big sites that are used for piracy were taken down. And one of those sites we used as a backup for when Crunchyroll didn't have what we needed. So we went into this and I wasn't able to find it in time. So that's why we had to do it this way. But this is my long way of saying, why is the third movie on on Crunchyroll but not the second one? Crunchyroll, please <laughs> add your movies. <laughs> Added the others. Yeah, stuff. I don't know why it wouldn't be there. But... So so weird. But anyway, go ahead, Zen. All right, I'm not gonna do the intense point by point breakdown we normally do because this is a two hour movie and we'll be here forever. So I'm gonna give yes. a a very simple plot summary here, and, yeah, um, and then we'll just talk about this stuff. Yeah, and, yeah. So there's better. a ten there's a ten minute long bit <laughs> at the beginning of the movie. Where uh, it's telling you not to to illegally record the movie, and there's someone with a camera for a head, and Kentoki is like beating them with the script of the movie, but then he accidentally breaks the camera, and the guy's like, "Oh, my dream was to pirate movies," and then Kentoki feels bad for breaking his camera, <laughs> and he's like, "Wait, I have I have credit points at the camera store. I can get you a new camera." Uh, and then we cut into the inside of the theater. And then it it turns out that Gintoki is still delaying things, and the rest of the cast like has a riot because he won't just play the movie. So they finally play the movie. Um, and then Gintoki ends up warped into some other world through the camera, and it's been the future. Five years. Into five the future. years into the future. Yeah, and it's a it, like post-apocalyptic world. Uh, Gintoki's dead, and uh, the the guy is like mankind is gonna get wiped out soon and so to disguise him he wipes a, a booger on gintoki's forehead that makes him look different to everyone else uh and he's like you can't let anyone know who you are um he gets attacked by this gang of guys that come in and we meet shimpachi and kagura from the future uh, and we learn that gintoki is assumed to have died as a result of the white plague which is like this virus that is uh killing people um Kagura still thinks he'll come back because he just left. Uh, everyone else thinks that he's dead. Uh, it, so they go to find Gengai because like Gengai was the one who brought Gintoki into the future. But then it turns out that there's like everything's kind of gone to shit um, when Gintoki's gone. So like Kagura and Shinpachi don't like each other anymore, and they're having like a war for who has the rights to inherit Gintoki's legacy. And that's when we learn that he looks like a penis to everyone else. Uh, just like a human-shaped penis, and I think he even goes by the name Peen. Yeah, he's like, my hello, uh, my Pien, name is Peen John. Peen John. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, instead of instead of Ginchon, it's Peen John. Um, Digging balls. Yeah, and then there's this like creepy-looking figure that's uh, got this staff, and he's got his face all like wrapped up in bandages and whatnot. Um, and we learn that the the white plague was kind of started by this creepy this creepy sorcerer group and Gintoki like remembers that uh, that they fought back in the war back when he was the white yaksha yeah but at the beginning of the movie they show him fighting each other yeah it's like the opening credits of the movie i think mm -hmm. um, i think it's right when he flashes him with it you see that and then when the next time you see him he's in the graveyard yeah mm -hmm. um it turns out that tai is uh sick and they decide that they're going to try to stop the curse by uh, going to fight the sorcerers. They do end up fighting the sorcerer. Gintoki just barely kills it, which uh, ends up, you know, he unbandages his head and reveals that he is the future Gintoki. Uh, and that he was infected by the White Plague way back in the war by these bad guys so that one day he would bring about the end of mankind. So he decides that he is going to go back into the past himself. Uh, and kill himself in the past by by killing the one the version of himself that was fighting in the war before he gets infected. But then uh, it turns out that when he does that, it's actually Hasegawa. Mm -hmm. um, and then it turns out that the movie pirate that was actually the one warping them through time has been uh, Tama, the robot maid, the whole time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then they decided that the people of the future did not want a past that did not have, or they didn't want a world without him in it. So they also went to the past to stop him from killing himself in the past. And so they are now in the war with like, they're like in the, the Amanto war, all fighting 
all of the aliens together in what I assume was a very cool battle sequence because it was muted for me. <laughs> it was um, very cool. <laughs> I assume it was as someone, very cool. As someone who watched it on <laughs> with the sound on, it was pretty cool. <laughs> and then um, Gintoki ends up teaming up with White Yaksha era Gintoki. They're like on the same team now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they're fighting the bad guy, and they all kind of do their own little part. Like, they go to shoot the virus at Gintoki, and they're like, what do we do? And then it gets blown up by Katsura's crazy bombs and stuff, and, like, the um, the Shinsengumi are there. Um, and they all stop them from beginning the White Plague, and they decide they're all going to go back to their own timelines, and they say that, you know, one day we'll uh, we'll meet again. It wasn't that, is that they didn't learn, uh, Tama reveals to them, we don't need to use the time machine because we're going to stop existing because now that doesn't happen anymore. So then they start fading uh, away slowly. <laughs> <laughs> and then and Gintoki's like, I'm going to keep the, I'm going to keep the pictures that we have, that, that we took. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I think the end credits, it shows, um, oh, them no. like meeting each other for the first time again, like as, as the... Yeah, yeah, and the, and the, in the new timeline, in that the they new created, timeline, they and the new one another. Yeah, in the new timeline, they're going off to go see the movie that they were, um, where they got the the film strips from at the beginning of the movie. But and then the credits for which show was like all the episodes and all the moments for Gin, uh, Gintama throughout the years, which is pretty nice. But yeah, it ends with them getting back, and then you assume that everyone got back together, and then it's over. Uh, and that is the movie, correct? Um. So to start, Zen, how do you feel about a time travel movie? <laughs> Specifically with anime related to it. <laughs> Normally they suck really bad. I, I think that this one was so absurd with it that it was just like kind of fine. Yeah. Like it was so over the... It was borderline ridiculous for the plot and plan to be I'm going to go into the past and kill myself in the past. <laughs> So that I no longer exist in the future. Yes. And then the whole cast goes to the past to fight in the war in the past to save him. N- not, yeah, putting into the idea of like, hey, the the nice future that they go to in the end, I'm like, well, wait a minute, G- Gintoki died and he saved a lot of you guys. So how, like, obviously they don't get bogged down into that. They just kind of have the, they have the idea of like, oh, no, everyone's fine now. They just don't know each other anymore. But um, yeah, by the end of it, when they started doing the bit about like, okay, we all disappear now because that's how it works. And they're like, wait, what? We had no idea that this is how it works. I was like, all right, this, this is fine. Um, obviously, um, whenever I see anime and time travel, I immediately go to the Cell Saga and remembering oh god all the flashbacks of my childhood of trying to remember exactly how does that actually function and the multiple rule breaking ideas of how does this actually work i think it ends up working fine for this movie because it's like uh, yeah you're like like you said this is a very silly movie so by the end of it i was just like yeah you know what i just accept that this is all how it happened <laughs> it's fine mm-hmm. yeah it's it's a very silly it's 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 kind of like uh, I had this opinion the other day about like the Deadpool movies too, where it's like at some point you have to accept that they're not thinking about that shit, so you shouldn't really either, <laughs> and just yeah. enjoy the ride. It's, you know, it's more about the story being told inside of it yeah. rather than the actual minutia. The of continuity, time yeah, yeah, the minutia of, of going through time and establishing a specific continuity or whatever. Yeah. They're telling a story yeah. for, for a specific purpose. Yeah, exactly. So, Because that's why I feel like a lot of the time, a lot of time travel stories end up being kind of lost, is that the, either they try and follow a specific rule, and then one slight thing kind of breaks it, and then everything around it just doesn't make sense anymore. But in this one, it seemed pretty clear that I was like, no, nah, this is just kind of like a device in order for me to tell the story that I want to tell, and that's perfectly fine. Um, I will say there is one bit here, which is funny because someone actually sent it to me beforehand. Um, so Tama going back to the future to wait because basically she waits 15 years to go tell him everything. And by this point, everyone is basically forgetting Gintoki and both uh, Kagura and Shipachi do as well. And she goes up to them and she says, finally, I can do it. And then they never reveal what she actually does to make them remember Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> but in his specific um, uh, storyboards, 
he did actually storyboard the what the ex- explanation of what she did, which was basically she saved a bunch of pictures of him and then showed it to him. And that was originally going to be what they were going to show, but he they cut it for the movie. And there's actually some other storyboard things where they actually cut a lot of bits of it and then also changes around. But that's the one that is uh, most telling to me because I remember it after someone point showed this to me. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, they never did show how <laughs> Tama was able to make them remember. But it was fine because in that moment I was like, "Oh no, I, I, I'm sure and she figured out a way to tell them." She just told them. Quickly oh my was, god, you're totally right. They do forget, and then they're just like, "We're here now." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Okay." I, 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 somehow my brain didn't process it. No, put that together. Yeah, I think it's because the movie is edited in such a way that it's one of those moments where you're just like, "You know what? I believe it. They're here to save the day. Let's go." Um, but then when you stop and think about, like, wait a minute how <laughs> she was forgetting everything it turns out he did actually think about that but it likely for time reasons because like we said this is an hour and 50 minute long movie they probably had to cut it which make which makes sense i guess um so yeah uh, overall i ended up liking this movie i thought it was very nice i think i'm i think it's better for me to understand it as like i know the gintama anime is continuing i don't know how i feel like if this was the last bit of the gintama anime and then there was nothing left yeah and it just stopped here yeah Uh, yeah, that would that would be pretty bad i'm not gonna lie there yeah because this was a wholly original story that addressed nothing of like Gintoki's master and all that other stuff that they, oh, yeah. they keep setting up and like hinting at this just didn't do shit no this is definitely more of a like hey man we tried let me just send you yeah, off this, on here this feels a lot like um just like a random anime movie you know back back when they were all disconnected when it's like uh oh it's the hunter hunter movie with some shit that happens to them that never comes up anywhere else like yes this, this has that that vibe. I guess this is from the era of that, so I guess that makes sense. It but. does, and I think it does kind of make sense of like, especially the way it ends of like saying they'll go on more adventures, basically, and they will continue being them. And I think that's the part where I'm like, I think I understand it then, as the idea of like, um, it's going away and it might not come back, but they are still out there being who they are and doing stuff and helping people, which is, I guess, a way of saying like, this is not the way you want it to end but it is the way it's ending but i sure am glad they did continue on with the anime and we have more to watch because i definitely have i would be curious to hear from specifically people who are from this era specific time watching it for the first time and hearing how it would actually have felt like if this was really going to be the end of everything and there would be no more anime to continue on but yeah it definitely while i was watching i was going a little bit like man i just don't know how i'd feel specifically if this was actually the end of everything and it did not continue on, but um, thankfully we don't live in that world. <laughs> we live in a world where it, it got to get to it got its finish in in its own yeah, way. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, some other things that I liked from it. That beginning bit, by the way, I don't know if you know this, but this is actually a reference to a series of very popular ads in Japan. <laughs> the whole bit about the pantomiming camera stuff, those are actual ads that played at the beginning of movies <laughs> in Japan. Oh, I did not know that, no. Yeah, they are. That's why it's so weirdly detailed and going like, um... It's why they, like, they, like, rotoscoped everything around it. I was like, this has to be... This is such an elaborate bit, you have to be referencing something. So I went to go check, and yeah, that is 100% what it is. This is what they play in front of movies. It's, it's similar to our, like, you wouldn't steal a movie. And that wasn't ours, that was the UK. But what did we have for anti-piracy stuff? Do you remember? Yeah, it was like the you wouldn't... Wasn't that the you wouldn't download a car? Oh, yeah, okay. It was that you wouldn't download a car. I, that's, I, I'm 99.9% sure I saw those on TV when I was a kid. I, I remember that, too. Um, which is funny to think about, especially with anime movies, when it comes to piracy. That was the only way for us to be able to watch this movie. <laughs> it only makes... Uh, right? Yeah, it's crazy. That, that 10 minutes... Free, especially with him eventually coming around to them saying, like, oh, I'm sorry. I, you know what? Let me let me help you out here, buddy. I didn't know it was that rough for you. <laughs> it makes it feel a little bit better of like, all right, maybe that's a slight acknowledgement of maybe over on the other sides of the states. <laughs> piracy is a little bit it's a little bit different for us over here. Where piracy is the only way for us to watch a lot of these movies it ends up being. Just because they don't actually officially release it. I would love it if they did, but they don't, unfortunately. 
It's um, crazy that they still haven't in fucking 2024. <laughs> like, I know. What, what, come on, man. Yeah, what's going on? I guess they don't think there's an audience or something. I don't know. That or they try and do it so that like you have to buy the DVD and Blu-rays, and they're like, well, if they really want it, they'll do it this way. But I think in terms of like trying to get people on board for your stuff, you kind of need to put that stuff on streaming, especially because I feel like this one is a specific, very important part of like a, a pivotal time in Gintama history that I feel like is worth putting up as a movie on Crunchyroll for the very least. Like, I can understand maybe Benny Zakura not being on there because it's like, all right, you're retelling an arc. Fine, fair enough. But this one feels weird, man. It feels weird not to make it more widely available, but eh, what, what, what? <laughs> I'm fighting a losing battle at that point <laughs> with, with Japanese asking uh the japanese to put more stuff on the internet for more people to actually enjoy it's it's a losing battle on that front uh i also did like the cameo for um, from Tork, the specifically the toriko movie who was going through uh, not the same fate because unfortunately the toriko anime over time got bad but also had to end their anime early <laughs> mm-hmm. that toriko movie is pretty good though if you've never seen it um, I have not seen it. I have seen the one where it crosses over with Goku and Luffy. Yeah, I've seen I've seen that one as well. But that that movie is I have is... not seen the um just the Torka movie. The the dude who sings um Dan 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 Bato from um from Dragon Ball Super, he's in it. Cuz he's the main Oh really? Yeah, he he <laughs> sings the main Torko theme and the movie begins with like Torko's <laughs> the, the guy who sings it in a concert and as he's walking behind in the background you see Gintoki Kagura and uh, Shimpachi. <laughs> so that is their reference to each other of both of them having both, both of them being in the beginning of the, of each other's movies, which is pretty love funny. That. Yeah, I um, love that. Uh and some other stuff from here. Yeah, the 5 years later stuff. I'd like to be apparently the voice actor for Shimpachi has gone on record as saying it was very hard for him to play Shimpachi in this movie because he's mostly serious for the entirety of it because the five years later without uh Gintama Shimpachi is just like almost 100% serious until he starts actually winning them back near the end of it and he starts return returning back to his old ways um there was some good bits here that I liked with uh, specifically Kagura, which is I like that her future version. The both of them are actually both of them are like two halves of Gintoki. Shinpachi's using um, Gintoki's sword, and then Kagura is wearing his what the hell is the outfit that he's called? Is it just a? I actually is it a kimono? Is that what Gintoki wears? Uh, yeah, he wears like a it, it's a kimono but he's not wearing it all the way like he has one sleeve pulled down and it's not like tied very oh, okay. tightly she's and he's wearing... got like a he's got like a shirt and pants on underneath it got you she's wearing his kimono thing and shimpachi has his sword which is a good way of so showing that like hey they're both trying to live up to him but they're also not the full half yet um and they don't get that way until later on in the movie where they're actually putting it all together um some of the other five year later gags i also liked were the uh when they first show um katsura and he basically just went full takatsuji yeah right? <laughs> where, where they're like what happened to him without gintoki he basically turned into he joined the extremist group and they actually played takatsuji's theme for him and everything which is very funny he's like he started being weird and saying like he was gonna burn the world it was very <laughs> It was a very dark time for him. Um, Okita actually looks a little bit more like some of the other renditions of Okita that I've seen of the actual person who had like a ponytail. I don't know if he actually had a ponytail, but I do see a lot of art of various Okitas uh, who's based off of the real life um, Shinsengumi member Okita wearing the ponytail. So I can only assume that they actually did. He actually did wear one at some point, or at least it's a famous enough thing that they put it all in there. Um, oh, you mean Okita's outfit? Yes. When he's in the red? and um, That is Kenshin. Is it? It's just Kenshin. Yeah, G G Gintoki even calls him uh, knockoff Batosai. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> I didn't yeah, realize like that. He's, he's literally just Kenshin. Exact same outfit, haircut, and everything. Oh, that's amazing. I didn't even realize that. I thought it was a specific thing related to actual Okita things. I, I didn't even pick up on that. That's funny. Um, yeah, everyone had basically a funny five years later except for... Otai, who had an extremely sad... <laughs> she was the only one who actually got hit by the sad, because she's the one who's suffering through the the white curse that she's going through. Um, 
which I also ended up really liking that scene uh, where they had it where um, Sachan was specific. So Sachan's the only one that remained basically exactly the same as everyone else. Uh, as she was five years ago, and everyone else has, like, slightly changed. Like, the other girls have, like, shorter hair. Um, obviously, Otai is slowly dying of the curse that she had. Not a curse. It's, like, the disease that she has. The nano machine. Well, yeah, they reveal that it's it's nano machine illness. That's, like, it's not a real sickness. It's it's nano machines. Yeah, yeah, it's nano machines. Um, but I like that scene where Otai is basically saying, like, hey, I, I, my eyesight's going bad, but I really would have liked to see Kagura, Shimpachi, and Kentoki one last time smiling together. And then Sachan has her scene where she's actually breaking down, where she reveals why she never actually changed anything. Is that, like, how am I supposed to... Uh, I, it's not going to be right for when he actually comes back and everything's different. I want to look exactly the same, and I want everything to look exactly the same as he left it, and how can you actually leave... How can you leave us... And you're not going to be there, and it's not going to be the same. And it was a very sad scene, because usually Sachan is not really used all that often for emotional moments. So the VA actually gets to have an emotional moment, and yeah. so it works very well. Um, I also think it's really funny. This is not, like, a a serious bit, but mm-hmm. when, uh, when Kagura first appears... And they're like, oh my god, she's making use of her voice actor now. <laughs> and uh, every time she moves, her boobs like bounce a million times yes. in every direction. It was, <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was really funny. And then she started acting like, I didn't do it for you. She's like, oh my god, she's even a tsundere. Uh-huh, she's what the is- perfect tsundere <laughs> now. Oh my god, what this is the it's hilarious. And then also they, which is also kind of creepy. Kentucky also starts making jokes cuz now she's older enough. She's old and she's not a child anymore. So he starts saying like, "Hey, you know, I cuz if you don't know everyone as we said at one point, everyone sees him as basically a penis." <clears throat> so when he's saying specifically there's like a moment where he says like would you want me to stay with you guys until your actual Kentucky comes back and we can just be the odd jobs crew until he comes back he starts sp- speaking specifically he's like eh, i don't know it feels a little bit weird you know when i was living with kagura chan that's fine because she's like a child but now you're an adult and people are gonna say weird things about it and she immediately like kicks him to the river to try and kill him and she goes like shut up i don't want you talking anymore you make it yeah. feel weird. you're making it weird <laughs> And there's another actual good moment with that, too, where um, when they're having their lowest moment, he comes in and does, like, the classic Kentucky bits. And he goes to, like, give him hat. He basically says the line that he says that it was just, like, what are you all in heat? And then instead of the actual pretty Kentucky face, they cut to the penis face. Yeah, the peen face. <laughs> it's really funny every time they do it because there's always a disclaimer that says this is what he looks like to other people. <laughs> Yep, and they start immediately beating up on him as well. I was like, who the hell do you think you are <laughs> coming up here in your Kentucky cosplay? Uh, one moment. Okay, okay, I'm back. Uh, okay, so yes, the, everyone has their... Yes, I'm trying to remember... Penis face, that's where we are. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the... And he the, always looks like that to everyone else. Yeah. But they it is really funny how uh, how much they take advantage of Kagura looking older for exactly a single movie. <laughs> uh-huh. They're like, all right, listen, we're never going to be able to do these bits again or have any scenes like this again, so we're going to do our best. There's actually another really good bit here about some of the, the other sex scene stuff in there that actually surprised me. Because um, Shimpanchi, to show he's dark now, he's like, I threw away all my stuff into the trash. Like, all my Otsu's uh, idol things, yeah, they're all gone. My, yeah, all my idol CDs. And then he reveals, like, I'm into this now. And then he shows Otsu what she's been doing five years later, and she's making porn. Yeah, what, what's it? It's like, um... <laughs> the Otsu Palace... A threesome's had... not that scary or something like that. Was not the such title? a is not such a big deal she's like singing it like it's an original song but the great thing is that on the dvd cover it says the otsu palace has many doors (laughs) it's so fucking funny i was like looking i was like i can't believe they actually were able to get away with this guy (laughs) oh it's so funny i'm just glad that she seems happy doing it all because she's also still wearing the boxing gloves yeah 
Even though she's not working on it. Uh, the other one, the other design I really liked was uh, the the Tama gun tank. <laughs> when Tama shows up as the gun tank. Yeah, with... <laughs> the gun tank with the, uh, like, the mops on robot arms. Yeah, like a made version of the gun tank, which yeah. was really funny. And then I think that also kind of shows, like, okay, this is where the real Tama was. That, that was clearly just a fake in place Tama for now that they made yeah. a gun tank version of her while she was actually off doing the time travel bit stuff um which is very funny a really nice attention to detail on that but, uh uh there was also a really nice moment with um oh when they show Kondo remember when they sh- the the whole reason that they all got arrested in that one scene where it was like originally like oh yeah um gen guy got really drunk because he lost uh kentucky and then he basically um vandalized colonel sanders and then they show katsura and he's there it's like oh yeah katsura was also vandalizing the colonel sanders and then they show kondo because like kondo was colonel sanders <laughs> he actually was and he accidentally set fire to the entire place and that's why he's also under arrest from everyone um yeah there was also a real nice moment with sadaharu as well from when everyone was wary of him coming back he was still able to really see that it's gintoki and he like let him pet him and stuff very nice very nice character moments for a lot of people in this one um and yeah five Oh yeah, and Elizabeth has that fucked up design. I also saw that originally that they wanted for that the Elizabeth design. His original vision was Elizabeth having a huge package as well. <laughs> like you see his yeah origin- yeah <laughs> really when he's fun. like shredded yeah yeah where he's like crazy shredded. Originally his plan was to also add a bulge at the bottom for him, and they got I guess <laughs> that was the one thing they vetoed. It's like listen, you can have the boob bounce, you can have the all. <laughs> All palace doors have many openings. That's fine, but we draw the line at Elizabeth Bulge. <laughs> that's the that's as far as that we're willing to get. And yeah, I did like for a brief moment here, the as they're all disappearing because they everyone is like as they show all the different people throughout the five years. The freak is actually involved in the final fight, and he actually dies with Kondo at the end when he tries to go for a kiss when they're disappearing. Um. He goes like, alright, we're all disappearing, there's likely a never chance, I'm gonna go for it. And both of them die before they actually are able to disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Which is really funny, they kick them off the screen and they're like, oh my god, they died before they had the chance to disappear. <laughs> uh, and yeah, that's my basic notes here. I think it's a very enjoyable movie to see for an hour and 50 minutes. How do you feel, Zen? Is there anything not brought it up was, It was a little long. For, I, for me. It uh, is very long. Not just, you know, I don't know that Gintama translates that well to just straight, really long time. Also, the heartfelt stuff was nice, but I feel like it lacked a little bit of the... Maybe it's just because it was like, oh, like, the, the resolution is this silly. Like, I, I, when I feel like, you know, Gintama heartfelt mm-hmm. sadness, I think of, like, the scene where... um. They're on the rooftop after Okita's sister dies, and uh, Hijikata's, like, eating the hot chips. Like, that's that's mm. my thought of, like, the peak of how, like, heartfelt this kind of shit can get. Um, it, it's those this m- one felt a little, like, sillier than that. I don't know. I think it feels a little bit more movie-like. Like, what you're specifically describing is these emotional moments that can be allowed in a show type of setting. Of, like, yeah. It's, like, it's not specific. Like, obviously, the death is heartbreaking for what it is but it's a scene that happens afterwards it's the it's the moving on portion of it it's the part of where you open up the bag that is like in example for okita's sister you open up the bag of chips that was their favorites and you're just enjoying it and you're crying because they're no longer there we don't we don't really have moments like that during this movie Um, no not at all and like i i think in the context of what it was where it's mm -hmm. like this might be the last thing ever it's kind of sweet to end it on like technically it isn't because Gintama's basically just you know it they they're starting all over again you know and you're there no matter what they would still meet each other again in the future so like in the context of you might never see them again it's probably very sweet to you know see them all meet up at the end like that like even in a new timeline they would still find each other um 
in in the modern context of we know it doesn't end here, it was just kind of like, well, that happened. <laughs> this was a thing that I watched. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I think that's fair. It's definitely of like, um, again, with the context of that, this is definitely like everyone's here for one last show. It's the last show of the rodeo. Everyone kind of gets their scene. Everyone kind of gets their moment. Everyone kind of has their scene saying something, and they appear. They even appear in the final battle. Hell, even the old man Musashi has a moment at the beginning of the movie saying his things. Like, near the end of the movie, all four of the original, like, um, uh, Sakamoto, Takatsuji, everyone, like, in their old form, they have a way of, like, doing something. It's, like, their way of saying, like, you just want to see this one final time, and then the curtains close, and then that's it. But you at least get to say like goodbye in a specific way and stuff like that. So I, I get what you're saying here of like the emotional bits that are there, they're more emotional for the moment, but they don't hit the same level of like emotion that the show does when it's normally doing it. I think you're right on on that part. Um, so yeah, it ends up it doesn't yeah. It ends up being that the emotional moments aren't can't really stick because you know that they're not going to because yeah really yeah I, I I think it's hurt by being watched in retrospect uh, like knowing what actually happens I I do think it does hurt it a little bit like yeah I would probably be much more uh, hit by it if I thought this was the end um, mm-hmm. I know it's not so I'm like yeah. okay well yeah you know, whatever but. yeah no you're you're right on that. Um, you're right on that because usually when with anime movies in this scene they don't really get to do stuff like this it's like specific emotional moments maybe it's a bad example just because <laughs> the main example i always go to is dragon ball um and then for all the dragon ball movies yeah they get hurt but there's never actual any sense of like they're dead because they can't die <laughs> gintoki makes a joke about it in the beginning of the movie because like hey wait a minute you can't say i died in this like, uh, they always say that you die, but you don't die. Like, that one movie advertised that Naruto was going to die, and he was fine by the end of it. Don't try and sell me on this shit. Um, so it ends up being that a lot of movies don't actually play with the idea that any of the main characters even have a shot at dying. And I feel like this one tries to say it does. But it's very obvious by the end that, obviously because of what we know, it's just not going to happen. So it doesn't hit the same as when, for example... Um, we see a lot of the emotional moments in there, and we don't know if the character actually survives or not, even though we know that they are likely going to survive it. Like, I'm trying to think of, like, a really good example of it, because I know there is one where it really seemed like a character was going to die, but using logic, you should have been able to know that it wasn't going to happen. A Tose! When a Tose got got, it felt like there was still a chance of it happening, but it doesn't... They either because of the, the notion of the movie of what it is, you know that it's not going to happen. It's weird to say, right? <laughs> Where, like, if it happened in a show, it's possible, but if it happens in a movie, there's just no way. So it doesn't yeah, play the same. Fair. That's fair. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's understandable um, to feel that way. Um, yeah, and I really wish I was able to see this on a better quality than what we have. Because I also feel yeah. like I heard it a little bit. That's why I'm a little bit more like. Oh, man, I really wish it that this was available in a better way for us to see. Like, obviously, we can't get theater quality, but if it was just available easier on any other kind of quality of any other kind, I would have also preferred that. But it just wasn't. So you just kind of had to take it for what it is and be like, that was very nice. But now it's time to go back to eventually the real anime of what's going to be coming up. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel that. Yeah, and I feel like this would probably be better on a better watch uh, later down the line of me going like, ah, you know what, I just kind of wanted to watch this movie and going back to it and being like, ah, yeah, there's some good moments. Kind of like similar to the DBZ movies, funny enough, where I'm like not always in the mood to watch like Lord Slug, but occasionally I get into the feeling of like, you know what would be fun right now? Lord Slug. <laughs> Let me pop that in. <laughs> yeah, that's I can see that. Yeah, so I feel like it definitely can never reach to the, the heights of the show can. But there will be moments where I'll be like, you know what? I enjoyed that, and it's been long enough. Let me pop this in and see it again. Check it out, for sure. And, yeah, I think there's anything else to say for specifically for this, Zen? No, I don't think so. All right. Feel free to tell us how you feel about this one, because, again, I, this is another case of uh, us coming into it a little bit 
out of context as like people who have we basically have shown up after the battle and are looking at like the battlefield that was here and without the history behind it i feel like we have a different experience compared to the people who actually went through it and stuff like that yeah i yeah i am interested to see uh what people who were seeing it at the time think about it mm-hmm, 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 for sure anyway that's it for episode 100. So let's talk about what happens. Unfortunately, we're not ending, so we have to continue on because <laughs> not every <laughs> not every shonen show has been watched, and therefore we will continue onwards, and we will continue onwards, hopefully. We'll be doing this for 50 years. We're 100 episodes in, and we're not done with Kintama yet. No, not even... Well, we are close, but not super close. <laughs> So what would be next? There is actually a little mini series thing. Not a mini series. It was like a twenty minute. Um, I guess this is, is it an OVA would be the right way. I think it was either an OVA or a Jump Festa thing. It was a promo to restart Gintama. It was like a Jump Festa and a Jump Festa anime tour that I believe we can find. A pro- it was a promo to basically say, "Hey, Gintama, Gintama's coming back. So check it out." So we'll be watching that. I believe it was, someone told me it was around 20 minutes, and then we will continue on with the actual Gintama show, which will be rebranded as Gintama, like, little dot at the top of it. <laughs> it, was, it was like, I think it's a, maybe it's a, the beginning of a quotation mark, not 100% sure, but we will continue on with that with episodes 202 to 203, and then, pro, let me see, 1, 2... Three, then we can do two, episode two hundred four and two hundred five, and then we will have those bits right there, and then we will save up some of the other ones because we. I just realized that the, I went back in time. Hold up, that is not the correct thing. <laughs> it will be episodes two sixty six, two sixty seven, and then up to likely. Let me see. Okay, yes, that seems fine. We'll stop at two sixty nine. That will be at least five episode things to go through. And we will be back on the proper trail of Gintama, of trying to get this done. Hopefully soonish. We're pretty getting pretty close to being basically... After that one, we will have 100 episodes left to go in a movie. So, that's like what? Mm, maybe 20 more shows or so? Actually, no, because we're going to have to start blasting through a lot of them at a given time. It's not a lot of time left, but we will continue on with Gintama, maybe finishing hopefully close to the end of the year, but if both of our schedules continue being wacky as it is, early 2025. (laughs) Yeah, really? Yeah, at at that point it will be like that, because I am going to have to uh, disappear for Vegas for a little bit, and it's very unlikely for us to be able to record in time for us getting ready for that, but if we can, we'll see. Um, and that will be sometime in October, and then there will be November, and then it will be December, and then I should, we'll see. My schedule gets really crazy, really hectic around December, and I just had a conversation with my boss that was me saying, hey, we should probably look out for this, but based off of what happened a couple nights ago, I don't think we're ready if the actual thing is coming, so (laughs) be prepared. (laughs) I'm preparing everything possible, but yeah. That's going to be next Shonen Archive, and then obviously for actual Shonen Archive stuff, we will eventually get to the other ones, we swear. We will get back to, uh, uh, I've forgotten their names, that's how long it's been since we've talked about them. <laughs> it will be, we'll be back to Yu-Gi-Oh! GX Kuroko and, and Koroko. Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, Koroko. For Koroko, I have to rewatch those episodes at this point, because I actually watched that arc. Oh yeah, it's been so long. It's been yeah. so long, and the problem is the arc was so good, I felt bad us not doing the best job that we could, so I kept delaying it and delaying it and delaying it, and this is what happens. <laughs> so that's why I can't be too hard on Sorache or the, gor- the gorilla uh, manga artist for manga artist writer for Gint- for gintama because i also suffer from the idea of like ah, it's not perfect let me let me just keep going let me keep going and then you end up being like a month later and you're like shit <laughs> well why isn't this a pretty pickle we walked ourselves into so yeah that'll be it for the future shonen archive stuff so as always, if you want to keep supporting the show, the best way to do that is to watch, leave a like, and comment if you so feel like it. But you never have to worry about the show going away because Fago literally uh, funds this entire channel. <laughs> Fago does so well for me. 
and it got picked up on an algorithm that I'm always glad to just be able to be like, oh man, let me just do something else here now that I know for a fact the channel will be fine as long as I continuously make Fago videos. <laughs> so you never have to worry about that. Uh, just showing any support for it is uh, very nice. And if you want to support Zen, you can go over to his channel and uh, where he does Shonen and Chill and also wrestling and Chill. Uh, when we find time for it. So, Zen, what's going on in Shonen Jump? So much shit happened in the in-between <laughs> from the last time. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. This, I don't want to go too much into plot detail because it's going to spoil a bunch of people. But MHA is over. God bless. JJK is mm -hmm. almost over. God bless. Uh, mm -hmm. Kagurabachi is still going strong. It's the GOAT. Read God it. Bless, of course. And they're uh, they're fighting back against the leakers, finally. Yes, so nice. the, the one of the the big leakers who leaked a bunch of JJK stuff was like, I'm super proud to tell you all I will be leaking Kagurabachi, and the community rightfully just ripped him apart to shreds. There were other community discords, like the Chainsaw Man Discord, uh, posted his info and then posted that uh, link on how to report him to Viz as a copyright infringement and stuff. Nice. <laughs> and they were like, let's, yeah, it's it, we need leakers out of here, man. We need yeah. them out of here. It's really funny, but uh, if your series is officially supported, get the fuck away from it, leakers. It, the, yep. You need to be able to... It's really weird because, again, it's a weird case of we do need people to specifically leak certain mangas and animes, but not the ones that are already popular. You don't have to worry about that because they're already fucking supported. <laughs> you need you to get, like... Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Like, the obscure shit. You need, the, like, the 100 uh, ghost stories before my death. That's a manga that is not widely known and therefore actually needs the help of people who are like, all right, let me officially translate this. But for stuff that's like JJK, we don't need that anymore. We did need it back in the early days when Jump wasn't officially supporting it, but we just don't need it anymore. It's, it's good now. <laughs> Everything's fine. Mm -hmm. Don't need it. Don't need it. It's very. It's a very simple call and response thing, and uh, it's very funny to think about it when we're specifically being like, "Hey, this movie we couldn't find anywhere, so we actually did need someone to upload it somewhere." But you have to be actual careful about what you're doing it for. Super supported? Fuck off. Not supported? Go ahead, do your thing. <laughs> and as long as you do that, everyone's happy. And if you don't, God. Especially fuck off the JJK leakers. Motherfuckers are the reason I can't go on Twitter on Wednesdays. <laughs> and I disappear mm -hmm. for days on time. It's so <laughs> bad. Because I know immediately I get spoiled on it. An actual person I followed posted in, like an untranslated thing from it and went, went like, wow. And I immediately muted them and said, I will unmute you when JJK is over. And then left Twitter. <laughs> oh, it's so fucking rampant that it sucks ass. So, yeah. And the thing, too, is, like, I talked about this a bit, both on Shonen and Chill and on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. The leak culture or whatever could not materially damage Jujutsu Kaisen or My Hero Academia by the time it got popular. These series were, like, hundreds of chapters in, you know, 200, 300 chapters each in. Uh, it, they were set. Mm -hmm. They have video games. They have anime. They have merchandising. Kagurabachi is 45 chapters long. And if you start siphoning off everybody who would have been reading it through the officials to come to your stupid ass leaks so that you can get Twitter blue ad rev, you can actually damage the series. You can get it like fucked over. Yeah. Like it's it's not good. Your Kangarabachi is not actually immune to the axe until it has an anime and is successful enough that it keeps going. Um it's sad to say, but that is just the truth of the matter of it's currently it needs it needs those numbers it needs official numbers to show that there is still interest or else the axe can come for it and it's um it sucks <laughs> it honestly super sucks so i wish you guys the best in your luck in fighting it that actual movement of seeing everyone go against the leaker was enough for me to go like you know what when i find time and i stop reading charlie and the chocolate factory kagurabachi you're next <laughs> I'll check it out because it was enough to seeing that many people be that passionate to be like we need you to not be here right now because you will do more harm than good. I was like, you know what? It's fucking awesome. I <laughs> it made me want to support the official <laughs> release for it and everything and check it out myself. Um, yeah, 
And then we have we talk about wrestling as well on your your channel when we have we the do. time to wrestling and chill. Yeah, wrestling. We're gonna have so much fun to talk about. Um, oh, now with every. It, funny enough that if you're wondering if does uh, does wrestling chill follow the same thing of of um, later information coming out that makes the episode sound really outdated in the past. It does. <laughs> wrestling news happens just as fast as manga news sometimes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, kinda. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're we're the next one will be coming out. Will be uh, Bash in Berlin. So yes. that'll be that'll be interesting yeah. uh, to talk through. I have many thoughts about stuff that yeah. occurred. Uh, so yeah, that'll be that'll be interesting. But yeah, wrestling and chill has been fun. Um, yeah. Watch it if you like wrestling. We just like yeah. to talk WWE. Watch exactly. Watch it if you can. Any any excuse for me to do it. Most recently on a Fago video, me and my brother made a reference to the mouth of them from the South, Jimmy Hart, and someone said, "I never expected there to be someone to talk about Jimmy Hart in the middle of a Fago video." Um, you've earned my subscription. I said, "This is what it's all about, baby. This is the, <laughs> this is the market that I'm specifically going for." <laughs> Random wrestling references. Let's go. But anyway, follow Zen over on his channel. Uh, over on my channel, uh, a lot of ghost stuff as usual. Uh, I've been pretty busy lately just because um, work shit, but I'm going to be soon be able to record things. New banner units out, new stuff to worry about, and then I'm also starting to slowly plan out um, some other things that I need to do. I reached 3,800 subscribers finally, which is very nice. Hey, nice. Yeah, which I have a video idea that I have to talk to Zen about to celebrate for it, but it's a very important milestone for a personal reason because that is officially means that I have more than the old Dokkan Reddit channel we, that oh we Oh, my from. God. I know. Dokkan Reddit channel Passing has... Passing of the torch is complete. It's finally over. It's finally, <laughs> it's finally time to say I have surpassed where I came from originally. <laughs> So, very nice personal thing. And I also start have to start planning out for 13 Nights of Halloween as well. Because uh, I'll be disappearing for a while. And a lot of the people that I usually call up for uh, 13 Nights of Halloween are related to Dragon Ball, making Dragon Ball videos. Oh my god, it's almost Halloween time. I'm so Thank excited you. to watch shitty Halloween commercials and movies. Hell yeah, that's what we're going to be doing, brother. You already know I have it ready on the side. <laughs> Uh, having a lot of fun times there, but yeah, a lot of stuff ready to be built up and excited for. So that's it for Shonen Archive this week, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. Once again, we will see you guys in the next one, hopefully next week. And if not next week, eventually we will be there. Be forever Shonen Archive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Zen, time to say goodbye. Goodbye, everybody. multiple shots.